What, you think all our gaming machines have these hard drives for nothing? Here at Games Radar, we're inching towards our annual Platinum Chalice Awards, which you can look for on the site shortly. Until then, we've got a solid list of 10 of our favorite downloadable games from 2011. They range from indie games that split off from the norm to titles with pedigrees, but they all share a common vein. They're absolutely worth your time to play. Whether you're on a PC, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, or an iOS device, there's been no shortage of excellent titles to pull your attention away. We've seen classics like Street Fighter 2 and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 get HD downloadable updates over the years, but 2011 delivered what was arguably the most anticipated re-release of them all. With Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition, fighting game fans could battle as hard online as they used to on the couch with friends. If you're inclined, you can even download replay backs and watch the world's best players go head to head. Outland is a great example of a game that fuses the ideas behind classic games to create a challenging and unique experience. Take the finest elements of platformers in the vein of Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night and wed them to the tricky color-based switching of shoot 'em up Ikaruga and you've got an idea of how it plays. It's undoubtedly one of the most original and aesthetically pleasing games to drop for download this past year. Infinity Blade threw down the gauntlet to prove that iOS games could be more than just gem puzzles and bad DS ports. Its sequel, Infinity Blade 2, expands the scale and scope beyond a repetitive castle environment and provides new weapons that affect the way you play. It still has the insanely fun Punch-Out! inspired combat, but with new wrinkles in the fold. And most importantly, it's as gorgeous as anything you'll play on a standalone handheld device. Double Fine's new approach to development post-Brutal Legend yielded some great downloadable games. 2010 brought us RPG light action with Costume Quest, and this year's stacking delivered a wildly original mix of silent movie chic and puzzle action. By the way, that all comes to the role of Charlie Blackmore, the smallest member of a family of, wait for it, Russian stacking dolls. He must possess larger stacking dolls than subsequently larger ones, all with different abilities, including sipping tea, burping obnoxiously, or charging their way through a crowd of other dolls that allow him to bypass different obstacles. It's as much fun to explore as it is to solve each section of the game. If Infinity Blade 2 provides an experience on par with anything you'll play on a PSP or a DS, Sword and Sorcery EP is an experience unlike anything you've played on any handheld device. An artful blend of 8-bit aesthetics, side-scrolling adventure, clever writing, and one of the year's best soundtracks, Sword and Sorcery EP is clever in all the right ways. If you saw that flood of hashtag sorcery on Twitter in the spring and didn't know what the fuss was about, find out for yourself. Infamous 2 definitely stands out as one of the better PS3 exclusives of 2011. Fortunately, even if you haven't invested the time in Infamous 2's campaign, Infamous, Festival of Blood, a DLC spin-off, doesn't require a copy of the disc to enjoy. The game's hero, Cole McGrath, is bitten by a vampire and has the rest of the night to find a cure. Fortunately, it means an infusion of new superpowers, including the ability to fly around New Marais as a bat, as well as plenty of new methods of mayhem. Festival of Blood is rather brief, but provides plenty of entertainment in the few hours you'll spend exploring it. Bastion is an action RPG that takes place in the post-apocalyptic world of Ceylondia and puts you in the role of the Kid, who is on a quest to build a stronghold called the Bastion, where his people could find sanctuary. The gameplay is decent, but it's the presentation, from the powerful narrator to the amazing soundtrack and beautiful visuals, that really drive this one home. It's an emotional experience that absolutely deserves to be played. Do you like tower defense games? How about one with a different perspective? In Orcs Must Die, you'll be switching from top down to third person. And of course, you'll have a wide assortment of tools to keep those orcs away. Okay, maybe the perspective isn't as revolutionary as a leap from Grand Theft Auto 2 to GTA 3, but the combination of a new camera angle, some irreverent fun, and solid tower defense mechanics come together for one of the year's best XBLA titles. In this 4-hour, 16-bit style indie game, you'll experience a beautiful and memorable tale of an old man whose dying wish is to go to the moon, though he doesn't know why. It's up to two doctors to move through his childhood memories, Inception style, to plant the idea that he must get to the moon. It's the combination of emotional and bittersweet moments mixed with hilarious dialogue and video game references that make the build-up to its outstanding ending completely worth it. 
In the follow-up to last year's excellent Super Meat Boy, designer Edmund McMillan takes a totally new turn with the Binding of Isaac, which puts an irreverent spin on the Old Testament tale of a child being sacrificed in the name of faith and turns it into a dungeon crawler in the vein of Zelda. Of course, nothing's as simple as Zelda, as Isaac must work through randomized levels and power-ups. It's either as easy or as tough as the game randomly decides it'll be, but once you get the flow of it, you'll keep coming back for more. 2011 was a great year for downloadable games. We've got a solid list of 10, but here's a few great games that didn't quite make the cut. Make sure you carve some time out of your busy play schedule to download any of these titles that you've missed. And for more information, be sure to check out Games Radar and stay tuned for our upcoming 2011 Platinum Chalice Awards.